안녕하십니까 니콜라스입니다 Today we are going to talk about AI image generators and we are going to try to understand how they work When I say AI image generators, I'm talking specifically about OpenAI's DALI 2 and Google's Imagen. They're both AIs that will generate a photorealistic image from a text input and the results are mind-blowing. DALI 2 will give us this image if we input the text an astronaut riding a horse in a photorealistic style or if we write teddy bears shopping for groceries in ancient Egypt, we won't only get an image like this one, which is one of my favorites, but we will also get different variations as well. Google's imaging is equally or more impressive than DALI 2 according to Google's researchers in terms of image quality. With the input, a photo of a raccoon wearing an astronaut helmet looking out of the window at night, imaging comes up with this. Or if we input the text, a dragon fruit wearing a karate belt in the snow, we will receive a picture like this one. As you can see, both DALI and Imogen are equally mind-blowing, but where Imogen might have an edge over DALI 2 is on drawing text. When asked to create a sign that says Burger King or Welcome, DALI 2 makes images that look real, except they don't have the correct text in them. In contrast, Google's imaging seems to be able to draw text without a problem. With the input of sprouts in the shape of text imaging coming out of a fairy tale book, the output looks pretty good. Keep in mind that since Google hasn't allowed public access to imaging, this might be a cherry-picked example that might not hold true after a lot of testing. Both of these AIs seem to work better with longer text inputs. The prompt to imaging for this image is an art gallery displaying Monet paintings. The art gallery is flooded. Robots are going around the art gallery using paddle boards. As you can see, Imogen delivered very well. And the prompt to DALI 2 for this image was a shipping container with solar panels on top and a propeller on one end that can drive through the ocean by itself. The self-driving shipping container is driving under the Golden Gate Bridge during a beautiful sunset with dolphins jumping all around it. That's long as hell and DALI delivered. It only missed on the dolphins because they're not there, but actually, if you zoom into the propeller of the ship, you can see a tiny little dolphin tail there. I could personally look at images made by DALI or Imogen all day because it's mind-blowing and mesmerizing what these AIs can do. Imagine people that make animations, movies, or video games prototyping their ideas using this kind of AIs. We could also say that thanks to these kind of AIs like DALI 2 and Imogen, the idea of humans being out of a job because of AI can become a reality pretty, pretty soon. In the case of DALI 2 and Imogen, they are maybe a direct threat to graphic designers or photographers. Now, of course, in the case of photographers or designers, maybe they will be able to use this AI as a tool to make their job faster and better. But I can also see companies that prefer to use AI-generated images for their website rather than hiring a photographer, for example. Imagine a fashion brand taking a DALI-generated image like this one right here and putting it on a shirt. Now, since I have a very peculiar style of shirts, as you can realize, I would probably end up buying that shirt, whether it was made by a human or an AI. The fashion brand would have reduced the human cost and the designer would have not been needed at all. That reality is inspiring and scary at the same time. So many questions come up. Like for example, who owns the copyright of the image? Is it the person that wrote the text? Is it the company that trained the AI? Is it the artist whose image was used to train the AI? Or how easy is it to know if an image presented in the court of law was created using an AI? Now it makes sense why Google and OpenAI haven't actually released these APIs with 100% public access for everybody to use because the consequences might not be so good. But now let's move on to see a little bit of how DALI 2 works from the inside. This won't be an in-depth explanation of everything, but instead what I want to do is just see what are the ingredients that make up DALI 2 and how sort of works so we can see that there is no magic involved. It's actually the work, brains and maths of some of the most brilliant people around. 
To understand how DALI2 works, we first need to talk about CLIP, which is a model that some people say is revolutionizing computer vision. Computer vision is a field of AI that focuses on how computers can extract information from images and video. Usually, what we are used to seeing in computer vision are AIs that label images. You show them a photo and they can tell you if there is a cat or a house or a horse. Clip is different in that it doesn't label images. Instead, Clip is able to relate images with their correct image caption. Now, captions and labels are different. A label is like a house, a cat, a door, a face. And models that use labels require a lot of human effort in labeling each photo to be able to train the model. An image caption, in contrast, is something like two people sitting on the beach in the sunset. The advantage of training your model with captions over labels is that you don't need humans to caption the images because there are many images already with their captions in news websites, in blogs, and Instagram is full of image caption pairs. Now, Clip was trained with 4 million of these image and caption pairs. So Clip is very good, as we said, at taking an image and choosing the right caption for the image, which is the opposite of what DALI does. What OpenAI wanted was to take a caption and return an image, doing an on-clip, basically reversing the clip process. To understand it better, let's see how clip was trained. How does it see images and captions and how it knows when a caption corresponds to an image? Clip has two encoders, an image encoder and a text encoder. The text encoder and the image encoder transform the text and the image into something called embeddings, which are vectors of numbers. Vectors, you can imagine them like long arrays. These vectors are the mathematical representation of the text and the image. For example, and this isn't a real example, it's just to illustrate the point, if we had these images and we turn these images into vectors using our custom image encoder, let's say that we get something like this. The first item of the array is a score of how cute the image is. The second one is how lovely, and the third one is how hairy. With this vector representation of our images, the computer will know that the first and last image are closer to each other than closer to the second image. Now, of course, the vectors that Clip makes have way more dimensions than our example because they extract all sorts of features from the text and the images. After Clip has the text and the image embeddings, which remember is just the mathematical representation of both of them, it will try to find the text vectors or embeddings that are closer to the image vectors or embeddings as well. Now, back to DALI 2. When we write an input for DALI, Clip will be used to generate only the text embeddings, which means the mathematical representation of those words. Those embeddings, the array of numbers, the vectors, that is given to a model called the prior model. The prior model will take these text embeddings and will output image embeddings. So it's basically taking the mathematical representation of a sentence and generating from that sentence the mathematical representation of an image. Finally, the image embeddings are given to a decoder that has the job of turning image embeddings into an actual image. This decoder and also the prior that we talked about before are both something called diffusion models. When training a diffusion model, this model will take an image and slowly, step by step, add noise to it until the image is lost, not visible. And then it learns to fix that image by removing the noise step by step until it arrives to the initial state of the image, effectively fixing it. This is the model in charge of taking those image embeddings and turning them into something that humans can actually see. Now, if your head's spinning, don't worry, mine is also as well. Explaining and understanding all this is very hard, especially because OpenAI hasn't open sourced DALI 2. It's closed source, so we cannot look at the code and see what techniques and what is OpenAI doing under the hood. But nevertheless, OpenAI's DALI 2 and Google's Imagen are both gigantic leaps of progress on the fields of natural language processing, computer vision, image generation, basically AI as a whole. Which is something that thanks to the sponsor of this video, you can learn as well. Naver Connect Foundation is recruiting 250 people to join a free AI education program called Bootcamp AI Tech. Bootcamp AI Tech is an intensive program that runs for five months, Monday to Friday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. covering A to Z of AI production. Students will start learning from the very basics and then they will get to choose from three tracks 
computer vision, natural language processing, and recommendation systems. The program consists of projects designed with real-life data and problems, allowing the students to experience development of AI models with real-life tasks. So by the end of the 20 weeks, students will be able to make an AI model into an actual service that can be distributed and used by people. The program will provide high-powered GPUs to students. There will be 82 mentors to help you and there will be also 30 to 40 business partners to help and guide students. Also, there will be various community events and peer sessions to enable students to grow within the developer community. This program is 100% free and anyone can apply, but only those with a strong passion and will to learn will be accepted. Applications are open right now and there is not a lot of time left, so click the link below to apply and be part of the program. Thank you as always for watching. Let me know what you think of this video on the comments and what video you would like to see next. Stay happy, stay free. It's Ginchi. Salam hamida. Kam See you on the next one. Bye-bye.